and love sleep, don't you? You're oblivious to everything around you. You don't hear people saying mean, stupid things. You don't see people doing bad things. Your whole world is safe and secure. Sometimes somebody will give you a little nudge or make loud noise or you'll have a bad dream and you'll kind of wake up a little bit and you'll look around and say, oh, everything's okay and go back to sleep because really you don't want to wake up. I went into a deep sleep during the Reagan years. I had no nudges, no loud noises, nothing to disturb my slumber. And then in 1992, George Herbert Walker Bush signed the United States onto United Nations Agenda 21. I hit the snooze button and went back to sleep. The very next year, 1993, President Clinton signed, a, signed on to the President's Council of Sustainability. And again, I woke up, I hit my snooze button, but this time it took me a little longer to get to sleep. And then came the 21st century, and all of a sudden it was GM Motors being taken over by the government, sustainable development, education, our kids being dumbed down. 150,000 acres in Central Florida being taken over by the EPA. Thousands of families being put out of work because of an endangered smell in California. And then I couldn't cut down a tree in my own backyard. I couldn't buy incandescent light bulbs. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm awake. Are you awake? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But why? Why this number? In a vanquishable number, there are 300 million of us. Shake your chains of NGO and government regulations to earth like do. Which in sleep had fallen on you and me. We are many, they are few. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. We are all here and we are doing something. And the evil that is United Nations Agenda 21 will never triumph in the United States of America. And now I want to introduce our first speaker, Glenn Paul. He is a member of the Black Robe Regiment. He was a pastor for 20 years. He has a radio show on WGUL 86 AM, and it is uh, Writing the Right, in which he covers Agenda 21 regularly. So I'd like to present our first speaker, Glenn Pov, and he is going to speak about global governance. Mm. First, by way of our um, understanding of who's all here, how many were there at the, our first Lakeland Agenda 21 just across the street? Let me see your hands. And you came back again for more. That's great. <laughs> first timers, let me see your hands. All right, good group here today. All right, we appreciate that. We have uh, back in the back several uh, different tables from all different speakers as well. And ours is Patriots Inc. And we have uh, three CDs that we have uh, of my interviews with various people. Tom DeWeese, who's 25 years against Agenda 21, is on this one called UN Agenda 21. And then I summarize the entire general information about Agenda 21 also on this. And I also talk about equity. Uh, in, your, in your notes is last, last time's, uh, Lakeland's first one, 
It's called equity controlling the individual, and it has fill in the blanks. Well, you can't fill in the blanks because I already did that one here, but it's on that CD as well. So you can kind of have the notes all ready to go and follow along with it if you'd like. The second one, and it's a package of three, is the New World Order. That's my message today. And the third one is man-made climate hoax, and John Casey, who will be uh, coming right after me in the messaging uh, agenda here for today, will be speaking on that in Cold Sun. He has a, a information there. So when you go to there and you, you're interested in those CDs, uh, Joetta and others will be happy to help you there. And just ask for the surprise after you purchase the Agenda 21 one, and she'll tell you something about that. Enough of that commercial. And we're all done with that. I just want to say something about the Black Robe Regiment. Do we have any pastors here or members of the Black Robe Regiment? Can I see anybody's hand? Yes, pastor. Okay, good. And a member. All right, great. Um, uh, the overall condition of the nation is a direct reflection of the overall condition of God's people. And I accept that the pulpit is most responsible for the overall moral strength or decadence of the country. And this is what the Black Robe Regiment have pledged. We pledge to be faithful and courageous members of the new Black Robe Regiment and will fearlessly proclaim God's perspective on all issues, whether spiritual or temporal, and extend the knowledge and application of his principles, not only throughout my, our churches, but also across our community. And uh, there's information on that at Wall Builders, and you can get more information uh, right there at wallbuilders.com. Agenda 21. That's why we're called Agenders, because we want to end Agenda 21. Today I'm talking uh, about the New World Order. This is the gre a great time to start this agenda's conference with this topic because it's the overall global topic that everything afterwards, every speaker afterwards will go in detail about their specific area of concern. And so when I talk about the New World Order, I'm talking from a global point of view. The New World Order strategy is using the law to restructure human nature. The master plan is through the tool of Agenda 21 to control the individual through the environment, to control the individual through the economic ways, to control the individual through equal justice, they call that equity, and then control the individual through education. All of these topics will be discussed today in various forms by different speakers. The whole idea of a New World Order and Agenda 21 is transforming our way of thinking. The goal of the globalists is to attack unalienable rights, which includes reducing human population in the world. It also is based on world governance of public decree, not on individual rights, more on collectivism, that we're a part of a whole, not that we're individuals with life, liberty, and property, and the pursuit of happiness from our uh, original papers and they want to abolish private property all of these were going to be are going to be discussed in detail so their goal is to create a world governance in accordance with specific <laughs> objectives namely these to end national sovereignty to abolish private property to restructure the family unit to increase limits and restrictions on your mobility and to increase limits and restrictions on your individual opportunity we're seeing that all the time through the Obama administration as well. You may have seen this picture before. It's called Baphomet. Baphomet. It sets forth the aims of the Illuminati, which are very, very strong toward one world government. It combines two Greek words, Baphe and Metis. It means the absorption into wisdom. And the, the father of the Temple of Universal Peace is what this speaks about and is representation of a satanic divinity, the Luciferian divinity. The great secret of all of this is that the race of Shem and Japheth, and if you're European, you come from the line of Japheth. If you're Shem, you come from the uh, Semites, and his civilization are to be destroyed by Ham's offspring, Canaan. And those are the uh, Arabs today. So, Here's their goal. The Babylonian Talmud says this. Five things did Canaan charge his sons to do. And these are the Arabs in particular, or uh, descendants of Ham. 
Five things. Love one another. Sounds good. Love robbery. Oops. Love lewdness. Hate your masters. And simply lie. Don't tell the or speak the truth. Uh, Patriots Inc. Right and the right. We speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God and so help us God. And we say that when we go in front of courts. The truth is what we want to give. In my prayer earlier, I talked about the first thing we need to be is not passionate, but principled. Principled to instruct. And we need to know the principles whereby we're instructed. And then we go from principle to patriotism to inform. And that's why you're here, and we're so glad you're here. And from the patriotism to inform, we want you to take this material back with you and share it with your community, with your neighbors, with your friends, as well as your enemies. <laughs> and then the third part is passion. We definitely have to demonstrate passion, but it has to be in perspective of the principle and the patriotism. And the passion is to inspire. And we hope that we will be inspiring you today, moving you on to greater patriotism, moving you on to be instructed through great principle from the Word of God, from the Founding Fathers, and all of our documents that we have. We here, who are members of Agendas, are constitutional conservatives. We are not lying, but we are speaking the truth, no matter what. When I was raising our four sons with my wife, we homeschooled 25 years, we're all done. They're in their 20s now. And uh, we're all finished, as far as that's concerned, the formal education. We always prayed every day that they would be men of God, mighty in spirit, and strong in the character of Christ. And that's my prayer constantly for you folks. As a Black Robe Regiment member, as a, as, a, as a person who has God in the center of my life, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, I want you to be men and women of God, mighty in spirit, and strong in the character of Christ. We can if we're principled, if we're patriot, uh, patriotic, and if we're passionate. For almost 4,000 years, this was the modus operandi of the Canaanite heirs who today control the world order. They're the ones who do control the world order, and we'll talk about that. The United Nations document, along with the treaties once ratified by individual nations, is the idea of becoming international law, above and beyond any individual state, which I mean country, of the world. The evidence is that the UN created the Commission for Global Governance. And our global neighborhood predicts a world court, they predict a global tax, and a global police force. Again, usurping any individual sovereign nation's constitution and government. The U.S. State Department in publication 7277 outlines a one world police force. Did you know that? Under the United Nations, did you know that? Yes, yes, yes. Many prominent world leaders are calling for a one world government throughout the world. The problem is that most people are so occupied with life's responsibilities and careers and sports and TV, they have little time to study what's going on in the corridors of power. And that's why Rita was sharing that little vignette at the beginning. And she has awakened, just like we have ourselves. And that's why you're here this morning. The United Nations focus first in their organizational focus, they have things such as the Trilateral Commission that are influencing global New World Order, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Royal Institute of International Affairs from Britain, the Bilder uh, Bilderbergers and the Club of Rome, as well as many world leaders, media personalities, and influential people. It's well organized. For example, the published goal of the Council of Foreign Relations is a one world government. They've published that. The core of these groups holds to the Illuminist philosophy. Secondly, besides their organizational structure, which is very high, is the economics, the free trade agreement, including the International Monetary Fund, including world banks, including the Bank of International Settlements, settlements whose goal is to implement the coming global monetary crisis. Do we have one today in the world? Yes. yes. Institute a universal debt-based currency controlled by the international financiers and issued to individuals against biometric identification cards. Mm -hmm. we got that. Mm -hmm. This is all happening now. These are the headlines on our 
in our magazines and our newspapers on a daily basis, and it is all about control. The third part of the New World Order under the United Nations is religion. It includes the World Council of Churches, the Parliament of World Religions, and it's based on pantheistic and humanistic philosophy, not on our founding father's Bible, not on our founding father's principle, not on our founding father's morals or religion. The philosophy now being taught in the education system has been implemented under programs such as Goals 2000. And so we find the new world order will be socialism. The individual will be subservient to the state. Rights and power reside in and derive from the state, not the individual. Already Obama's talking about collective salvation, not individual salvation. He's unbiblical, number one, and it's a lie, number two, because that's socialism. And that's not the United States of America and its founders. That's why we call it writing the right in my show. We are to the left of center and far left with the progressives and the socialists in our country who are leading our country. And we want to bring it back to the right of center where our founding fathers were, a little bit to the right. And that's why we're writing the right. It's like a ship that is ready to sink and we're going to right the right. And that's the idea, not through socialism. Collectivism is a part of that. It's the private ownership and management of property that is not to the benefit of the hu uh, that is not the benefit of the human race, and so all property in eventually, and we'll have others talk about this today, is for the desire of being controlled by the federal government, which then is controlled by the world government. Norman Thomas, an American socialist, six times ran for the president's position. He said this, the American people will never knowingly adopt socialism, but under the name of liberalism, and I'll add the word progressivism because he didn't have that word back then, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program until one day America will be a socialist nation without knowing how it happened. I no longer need to run as a presidential candidate for the socialist party. The Democratic Party has adopted our platform. And a lot of rhinos in the Republican Party have too. <laughs> He wrote that in 1944, not last year, and he's right on the mark. The New World Order controls, mm -hmm. and the tool is Agenda 21, and we're going to be talking about sustainable development in detail later on. They'll be talking about private ownership of property to be abolished, surf them under the controlling elite, that is, will be servants of the state. No individual liberty nor rights. They're taking them away little by little. I can't even take out a tree I planted myself on my land without the county's permission. Whose land is it? Whose children are they, the villages or mine? And the state or the country looks after you for your best. Sounds good, but socialism. The government is to control every aspect of personal life, and the depopulation is by abortion, forced sterilization, controlling human re uh, reproduction by two-thirds of the world population, to bring it down from about six billion to two billion people. There is deception. Everything they say, consider the opposite, and that's probably more true. Environmentalism is their big area, and we're gonna be talking about that throughout the day. So here's the historical cycle of socialism. We start out with freedom in our country, and through the fact of the sleeping Rita over here, we go to apathy and let our, you know, vote for people and then let our government do what they want to do. For the last two and a half years, I think we awoke. And the only thing I'm glad for Obama to come to be the president is because I woke up after 40 years as a voting Republican, and then letting them go, and then coming back converted and, and changed and compromised. And they're not my, my representatives anymore in philosophy, in principle, in patriotism, or, nor in passion. And then comes after apathy, enslavement, and that's what they're doing today. And revolt. Even the far left is revolting. <laughs> they are having Islamic revolts throughout our country. They are preparing, revolting against because Obama isn't progressive enough. He's not socialistic enough. 
And of course, we know that he's too progressive and too socialistic from us looking at it from the right. That is the historical cycle of socialism. Is that what we want? We have people coming over from social, former socialistic and Marxist and communistic countries, and they're coming here to the land of the free, the home of the brave, and they're seeing these things. He says, I lived in this, and that's what I got away from, and now we're right there again under that enslavement and apathy portion, and we're moving toward that revolt. I came to America because I wanted to be free, to have a freedom of individual life, and have that individual liberty, and have my individual property, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's coming, and it's becoming just like where I came from in Marxism and socialistic states. They're warning us. They've been there before. We haven't. But we're coming. The conservative giant is rising. We're awakening. We're coming to reform. We're coming to reclaim. We can do it. There is great hope to stop this cycle and to go back to freedom. The New World Order implementation. Their part, first of all, is to brainwash by propaganda through the media, which is controlled by the left. Labeling the U.S. patriots as extremists, or what did they call us? Terrorists. Terrorists. Yeah. Who's doing the riots in the streets? The left. Who kept the, when we, when we went with the Glenn Beck group and they had a, over a billion, maybe two million people at D.C., restoring America, restoring courage? We kept that place spotless. Just like our Boy Scouts, you have to keep the camp, you have to clean up. It was spotless. And then they showed another one with the left. And it was a trash heap all over the place with one-fourth, not even one-fourth the amount of people there. That's what they value. That's what they believe in. And that's what will come if those extremists and those terrorists continue to gain control. The UN establishes the International Criminal Court. Crimes against humanity. They're going to call me a criminal against humanity for preaching and teaching this. Crimes against the environment. They're going to try to take us to an international court above and beyond our local, state, and federal courts. There will be no jury and there is no appeal. This is already written. Oops. The guilty, you'll be con considered guilty until proven innocent. It's almost like the IRS when they come on audit yeah, you, right? Really. You're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. Where would they get that from? Hmm. New world order concept. And controllers manufacture crimes against the innocent. They're going to manufacture them. They're going to cause a, the, just like the illegal busting of guys that are uh, drug busting and they can't find anything. And so the police, I'm not saying it happens most of the time, could plant drugs in the room and say, oh, so you're a drug addict, and so you got illegal drugs here, so we're going to take you in. And the guy didn't have anything in his possession. They're going to do that to the innocents as well. We've got to be willing to take that. But I understand that God says this is a God of love and a God of justice. He wants us to love others, and he will bring the justice about. The implementation, part two, the global biodiversity assessment. Yesterday or this week, I interviewed for my show at four o'clock today, which is taped, Dr. Michael Kaufman, the proponent of understanding biodiversity. And he's going to share that one hour before the Senate was going to adopt this, he was able to stop the vote. And we had success because he was willing to stand for this. Biodiversity reduces the population. And he'll be out here before, uh, before, he, before we know it. He's going to speak twice today. And uh, this was to reduce the population from 5.6 billion to 2 billion within the next 10 years. The Declaration Towards Global Ethics is called Authentically Human. They're calling this authentically human. For, first of all, there's nothing authentically true about this, nor human about this. And I believe in pro-life and not abortion, and that's authentically inhuman to, to believe in abortion. The UN Environmental Program is structured for this implementation, and the UN is the definer of hate crimes. 
And so our government who, and our media calling things like hate crimes, talking about having an opposition to the current regime as haters or racists, nothing is further from the truth. We are truthful. And by the way, I'm not a pessimist about these things happening. I am a, a person of truth and honesty and seeking the truth. I am positive about what I believe in and what you believe in. And that's what we go about with. Not to say, oh, the world's going to end tomorrow, go ahead and do this and that. You need to prepare because we hope that that's not the case. But, but we've got to be wise about that as well. Implementation. And then part three of the implementation is the de-skilling of trades. Replacing rather than fixing problems. The guys that could fix your bumper will just replace the bumper instead of fix it. It takes away their skill. They could do this. It's amazing. Those guys could, they could do that stuff. But they're now saying, no, no, no. You just need a new bumper and, it, and the insurance will pay for it. It's replacing their skills with something else. Something happens to your car and there's a computer glitch. They'll replace the entire computer in there instead of just that little piece. The other day I had a laptop computer that uh, got hit by the power surge. And I needed a four dollar part and I went to 15 and I'm not exaggerating I call 15 different groups can you put this part in on my motherboard and he says it requires a $2,000 tool to take it off I said just here's the four dollar part please put it in sorry it took me $75 to diagnose the problem that it was that and then another 25 and then to buy another motherboard because they would not replace the four dollar part I had to buy another mother. It's that kind of thing. There are people that are skilled, and they're going to de-skill them, making society wholly dependent on the system and dependent on public transportation, not your own car. Dependent on welfare. The more people on welfare and food stamps, which we have a food stamp president, you know, more on that. If you're dependent on the government, then the government can be your savior, and the leaders can be your savior. And some are even vying for global saviorhood. A nation of well-informed men who have been taught to know and prize the rights that God has given them cannot be enslaved. It is the, re the region of ignorance that tyranny begins. Benjamin Franklin. The current foundation of the U.S. is based upon Christian principles rather than pagan or Islamic principles. It's based on freedom, liberty, an opportunity for all. It's based on a sovereign, inalienable, God-given rights like the personal freedom, individual liberty, and private property. But the community law is what is running this. That's the communitarian system of governance. When they talk about community law, red flag for you, my friend. Here's what it means. It's an international and regional trade law. It's called communitarianism or co community law in simplistic form. It will be the supreme law over all local and national laws. It requires the modification of the U.S. Constitution and our Florida State Constitution. It is a balance between the individual and collective rights. It's not communism. It is not uh, the, uh, what we call uh, left and right either. It's a balance between those individuals. It has sustainable community replacing God. Community the law is supreme at every level. And it's not pure communism, either left or right dialectic. We have the left and right dialectic here, and we don't want communism. But it's neither one or the other. It is a balance, and that's how they're going to bring all the people in, the communistic people and the left and right of our country, under this community law, an international law. Individuals get their rights from the community. The Rockefellers and the Allies' goals. What are they? To establish a supranational authority one world order, to regulate world commerce and industry, to control production and consumption of oil. That's why we can't have oil, but we buy it from other people. And that, that's got, so they can control it. You know, we have enough oil reserves in the United States of America and enough gas in the United States of America to, to take care of the entire world. Besides just the United States in our own sustaining. But they're stopping it. To establish international currency, replacing the dollar. Look what's happening to gold and look what's happening to our dollar. To fund free and communist nations alike. 
redistribution of wealth and rule, to establish international police force to enforce the new world order. That's why I ask our sheriffs who are running for, uh, candidates for sheriff, candidates for sheriff, if we were under martial law by an executive order of the President of the United States, who are you working for? And they said, oh, that'll never happen. Hmm. That's not the one I'm going for right there. <laughs> but they say, well, if it were to happen, I, and they finally, we finally get to them, and some of them will say, I work for you. I will defend the community, my county. I'm a county sheriff, and I will defend my county. But most of them don't even say that. They will follow the state and the federal. If that's the case, we have no defense by, uh, you know, for us. The sheriffs better be on that. So when you ask for a talk about a sheriff, you better find out and answer those questions. It's not an international police that over oversteps us. He should defend us. And if he doesn't, we have to defend ourselves. Are you ready? To combine super capitalism and communism through a community law. That's what they want to do. Now, one group called the Noble World Peace Organization for the One World Government, it all sounds good. For, for the world peace to come, every person on the planet must be able to create their life without interference, be treated fairly and equally, have a voice in his or her government, and we believe the wor world peace plan meets or exceeds these requirements. But their international proposal is this, to establish a U.S. constitutional amendment to create the international government. Now, all those things sounded good, and three-quarters of the people in the country will say, not bad for the first four, they, or first three, they almost sound constitutional. But that's not their international proposal. Ahmad Adinejad, in September 7th, described introduction of the New World Order as the main mission of Iran. The main mission. In Tehran, he, write, he says, the Iranian president underlined the Islamic revolution's influence on the world nations and their rise against tyrannical rulers and said introducing the New World Order is the main mission of Iran. Not one of them, the main one. It is a mystery of religion. The great work includes a benevolent dictatorship, illuminating the human soul to a state of divinization. Humanity is one collective being. The individual must sacrifice for the benefit of the whole, and most are unaware of the true nature of their society. This is a one-world government and a one-world religion on its way in. And their occult philosophy includes a pure, pure Luciferian doctrine or Illuminism, where Lucifer the, is the name of the Satan and Illuminism is personal enlightenment by Illuminati. How fortunate for governments that the people they administer don't think, <laughs> said Adolf Hitler. Well, we're thinking. Establish a one world government is the Illuminati's desire. We have about a minute and a half to tell you this. With a unified church and monetary system. Advance ideas through mind control. Legalize and encourage the use of drugs and pornography. All these things are happening now before our eyes. Suppress scientific advancement unless acceptable to their aims. John Casey, next on, on, deck, on deck here, is going to talk about that. Cause total collapse of the world's economies and agenda to political chaos. Take control of all foreign and domestic policies of the USA. Keep all people from deciding their own destinies by means of creating crisis and then managing such crises. Weaken the moral fiber of the nation and demoralize workers in the labor class by creating mass unemployment. Destroy all national identity and national pride. Fracture the nuclear family by encouraging teenagers to rebel. I'm not done. Use and promote rock music to facilitate this rebellion. Destroy religions and all industrialization and nuclear ge uh, generated electric power. Penetrate and subvert all governments. Work from within to destroy the sovereign integrity of nations. Organize a worldwide terrorist apparatus and negotiate with terrorists whenever terrorist act activities take place. Take control of education in America with the intent and purpose of utterly and completely destroying it. Spread religious cults such as the Muslim Brotherhood and the Muslim Fundamentalists. Export religious libera uh, liberation ideas worldwide and to undermine especially the Christian faith. Depopulate of our large cities. Give the fullest support to supranational institutions such as the UN, the International Monetary Fund, the Bank of International Settlements, the World Court. In the next steps, the banks and multinationals may eventually merge together and then merge with the one world government who will make sure almost no small business owners are left to bypass their system. The only ones selling will be multinationals controlled by the one world government. Therefore, everyone will be forced to rely on a monopoly which will have complete control over everyone. <coughs> the issuance of the one world order, this is the truth. This is the end. The rapture of the Bible-believing Christians, 
A seven-year tribulation period will come. This is biblical, all from prophecy and revelation. World leader will be revealed in the middle of the tribulation. Satan possessed will take over a one world government, claim to be God, commands all to make, take the mark of the beast to buy or sell, 666. But we have an agenda to bring all nations of the world together in unity. All the rest of this is on my New World Order CD. And I'm going to just show this to you here. And there are things we can do and important for you. We cannot ignore it. It's unable to be avoided. It is manipulating us like sheep. People are unaware of the truth and we need to wake up, prepare physically and spiritually for this. Let's preserve liberty. Let's pray for those in authority. Let's select God-fearing leaders. And let's remember to get ready, aim and fire. Arm yourself with the truth and be on the offensive, not the defensive. Aim, aim at the targets and fire. Advance against the tyrants. The solutions, stop, drop and roll just like if you were on fire. Wake up. Love the enemy, not hate them. Inform and unite the people. I know the rest of the story. I know the biblical one. I am here hoping that we will defer that by being the uh, agenders, the ones who will stop this new world order. Will it be successful? Not in my watch. How about yours? Thank you very much.